watching KTAL News Now. Here's Brittany Dufran with your midday news break. This is KTAL News Now. I'm Brittany Dufran in the Digital Streaming Center. Thanks for tuning in. Your midday news break is right here. Now we're going to start off with a homecoming gathering that was at a gas station and broke out in gunfire. And unfortunately, a cheerleader was caught in the crossfire. Now her mother is speaking out and the mother of three says she got a call after midnight. She describes that as a mother's worst nightmare. When she learned that her 17-year-old daughter had been shot in the leg and was being rushed to the hospital. Now, as you can see in this video here, you can see the amount of people that were in the vicinity when these shots were fired. And in just a moment, you'll be able to take a listen to the amount of gunfire that was shot. There had to be a target um, in mind. They weren't just shooting in the air or anything like that. There was a target in mind. So what led up to this? Now that is exactly what we hope to learn as this incident continues to be investigated. But what we do know is Shreveport police say a 20 year old person was also shot and survived. We'll provide you with more details as they become available and the latest information will be on KTALnews.com. Now here's some continuing coverage on the fire that was ignited in the Brookshire grocery store on Mine Avenue. A teen is charged with aggravated arson. According to authorities, the fire started in the paper goods aisle of the store last Friday around 4 p.m. Thankfully, no one was hurt, but that teenage boy was arrested. Now, really scary situation there, as I'm sure a lot of people were grocery shopping at the time, but thankfully, no one was injured. Now on to an education matters topic as Cattle Parish Public Schools announced a new partnership with the city of Shreveport. The Early Start initiative is aimed at improving access to early child care and education by preparing pre-K students ahead of kindergarten. Experts say 80% of brain development takes place from birth to age 3 and 90% by age 4. This initiative helps us to provide early childhood from ages 0 to 3 uh, educational opportunities to some, what could be about 600 additional students. So we're just so excited to be in a community that partners with the school system to make sure that we're doing everything we can uh, to support students learning uh, and living a healthy life. This is great to see that the city is making early child care a priority, providing adequate child care and early education to families in the community of Shreveport. The goal for the program is to improve literacy by the third grade. Now looking at our consumer headlines, as a move could send gas and oil prices back up in the U.S., OPEC announced it will cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day. The organization and its allies met Wednesday in Vienna, Austria. Together, they called OPEC Plus and said the production cut set to start in November was based on the uncertainty that surrounds the global economy and oil market outlooks. The move is a major reversal from OPEC's efforts to restore drop output cuts made during the COVID-19 pandemic. It also comes despite calls from the Biden administration asking the group to pump more for lower fuel prices. Now this leads us to our question of the day. I'm going to give you a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. Alrighty, here we are. We want to make sure that your voice truly matters here and want to hear from you. As you know, we've all experienced the direct impact of inflation and rising gas and oil prices. We want to ask you this here. Do you think OPEC's decision to cut oil production is a risky one? Go ahead and put your answer in here. Yes or no. Now, don't go anywhere. Your midday news break will be right back. If you're interested in learning more about these stories, visit KTALnews.com or download our app at KTAL News Now. You're watching KTAL News Now. Here's Brittany Dufran with your midday news break.
Welcome back to KTAL News Now. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brittany DeFran with more on your midday news break. The Gingerbread House hosted its annual Partners in Prevention Luncheon. Wednesday's luncheon showcased all the vital work being done by the organization to support child abuse victims. It's so inspiring because it really tells kids and young people that no matter what they go through, no matter what may happen in their own lives, they can always prosper and come out of it and they can become survivors, thriving survivors. And I think that message is so important because we need that for our young people today. And the best part of all is our very own Dan and Jackie Jovic had the pleasure of emceeing at the event as well and we know they had a wonderful time doing so. Now, people in the community matter, and this is why the Northwest Louisiana Walk of Arts inducts five honorees at the Red River Revel Arts Festival. Now, I'll try saying that three times fast. <laughs> the inductees include Geoffrey Bean, Van Cleburne, Nat Stuckey, William, and Samuel Weiner. The Walk of Stars was created 25 years ago. Now, that's amazing with tradition there to honor individuals from the region who made an impact in their profession. The honorees will have their own star under the Texas Street Bridge in the Red River District. Meanwhile, the Shreveport Commission on Race and Diversity held the mayoral forum at Sanitary College Wednesday evening. The focus was solely on race and diversity. Candidates answered questions ranging from how to stop racial profiling to improving racial race relations. People who attended expressed how important the discussion was and they really enjoyed it. In total, there were five candidates in attendance. Also, if you haven't heard, NBC6 is hosting a debate with the candidates running for Shreveport mayor. So if you haven't been had a chance to attend any of these forums hosted in the community, you can head on over there. Scheduled for Thursday, October 20th, you can put that in your calendar at 7 p.m. at Southern University. The topic will be infrastructure. Now, looking at your consumer headlines, as a move could send gas and oil prices back up in the U.S., OPEC announced it will cut oil production by 2 million barrels per day. The organization and its allies met Wednesday in Vienna, Austria. Together, they called OPEC Plus and said the production cut set to start in November was based on the uncertainty that surrounds the global economy and oil market outlooks. The move is a major reversal from OPEC's efforts to restore deep output cuts made during the COVID-19 pandemic. It also comes despite calls from the Biden administration asking the group to pump more for lower fuel prices. And this leads us to our question of the day. Giving you a moment to take down this QR code you see right here on your screen. We want to hear from you and ensure that your voice truly matters here as we all know the impacts of inflation and rising gas and oil prices. Do you think OPEC's decision to cut oil production is a risky one? Go ahead and put your answer here, yes or no. That's all for today. If you're interested in learning more about these stories, visit ktalnews.com. Have a great day, guys.